Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we continue to play in our series of super ultra budget deck techs. If you haven't seen the series before, this is where we talk about building together some awesome deck techs that will not require to spend a single rare or mythic to build. That is awesome! That's right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and finish up the rest of the color pairings. This is the last in the dual color series, and we're going to be playing an aggro deck today that I am calling, basically, Wolves. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So as you can see, we're looking at Gruel colors today, which means it's going to be red and green. We're looking at an average mana curve of about 2.1. We're looking at 28 creatures in the deck, 8 sorceries, 4 enchantments, and only 20 lands. Let's be clear about something right here. When it comes to Gruel Aggro, obviously we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. All we're just trying to do is just get the most amount of damage as we can while just overwhelming our opponent before they get to victory. But I figured, why not we do it with a little bit of an extra spin? So that's why, again, we're looking at trying to play today some Wolves and Werewolves because they've become highly synergistic and they have a decent amount of cards that have gotten enough support where I think even on a super tight budget like we have today, we could definitely put something together that is great for those of you who are new to Magic looking to get started. So with that, starting in the one drop slot, you will have Snarling Wolf here, which gives yourself an extra pump in case if you want to pay the two mana for it to make it a 3-3. And you also have Fearless Pup here, which also can give itself a plus two plus zero as long as you activate the boast ability and pay the three mana to make it a little bit stronger. Also, it has First Strike, which is actually kind of a nice little bonus for us, again, in the early part of the game. For the two drop slot, you're looking at Hungry Ridge Wolf here. It's a 2-2, but also gets plus one plus zero and trample as long as we control another wolf or werewolf. You'll also be utilizing Pack Song Pup here. It's only a simple little 1-1, one, one, but again, as the game progresses, as long as we have at least a wolf or werewolf on the battlefield, it'll get a plus one plus one counter on it each time. And even if it does die, you still get to gain life equal to its power. Great way to help us stabilize against other enemy aggro decks out there. For the other remaining card, we have Kessing Naturalist, our first werewolf that we want to talk about a little bit in depth. So real quick, Kessing Naturalist here is a two mana, two, two human werewolf that reads, whenever it attacks, you get to either add red or green mana. And until end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. It also has the daybound, nightbound ability. So if it does flip into its full werewolf form, it then becomes Lord of the Uvenwald. So this means that other wolves and werewolves we control will get a sweet plus one, plus one bonus. Same thing, just like its human side, as long as it attacks, you still get to add that mana and again until end of turn you don't lose these mana steps steps and phases end as far as how the daybound nightbound and i'm not gonna lie this is again a really convoluted thing that i kind of wish that wizards didn't put in but again for those of you who are still wanting to know about it when it flips to daybound and nightbound the way it works is if it becomes day or night that's how you can flip your werewolves in order to make sure this flip works this means that a player has to cast no spells during their own turn and that's how it flips from day to tonight it may sound confusing but don't worry we'll again kind of explain why we actually will care about this ability in just a few moments that's a surprise tool that can help us later going into the three drop slot we also have ferocious pup here this is a cute little three mana it doesn't actually have any actual power to it but it enters the battlefield and makes a green wolf creature token which is great for helping us go a little extra wider and we do have some creatures that encourage pump abilities so this is actually really helpful for us for the mid game and then finally in the four drop slot and our finisher for the deck is going to be child of the pact so with this card we'll talk about it also it just basically is another werewolf that reads for four mana you can create a 2-2 green wolf creature token and with a daybound nightbound ability if you can flip it to night side then becomes a werewolf with trample and becomes a really powerful 5-5 five five, and also means that other creatures we control get plus one plus zero so now let's assume for a second your opponent keeps casting spells and you end up having to cast spells too so how exactly are you going to take advantage of the fact that you have werewolves that can't be flipped Good question. Well, I'm glad you asked. So that's where, again, we're going to be one of our other sweet little bonus cards that's going to be coming into play here. We have, of course, Unnatural Moonrise. Unnatural Moonrise is a sorcery that reads, it becomes night. Until end of turn, target creature gets plus one plus zero and gains trample. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card. You can also flashback this spell for four mana. Really awesome way to ensure that we can then force our creatures to then become werewolves and then do extra damage to our opponent and also get a little bit of card draw out of the deal going over the remainder of the support options here we're going to be going back to the one drop slot here with hard hitting question it just means that one of our creatures can deal damage equal to its power to a creature or planeswalker we don't control so great early game removal there and also in the three drop slot here we'll also have a flash enchantment which is hell pack resurgence a really awesome card here that when it flashes in each creature we control that's a wolf or werewolf will get a plus one plus one pump and also trample great because we definitely need to make sure we can force through 
damage against chump blockers, and also it's a nice little combat trick in the mid or even late game. As far as the mana base is concerned, again, we're going to keep it as simple as possible. So we're looking at, again, only some mountains, some forests. Game Trail is actually rare in paper, but it's still going to be super cheap regardless. So we'll then take advantage of the fact that, at least on Arena, it is an uncommon. And of course, Road of Ridgeline here, again, it's only a simple tap land, but it does get the job done. If you do want to take this in the best of three, your best options for this will be Tormod's Crypt here as your graveyard hate. It's free, and again, we want to spend more of our mana on focusing on the aggressive part of our deck. You'll also have a catch-all protection spell with Tamiyo Safekeeping here. Great for us because, again, it gives any one of your permanents hexproof and indestructible with a little bit of life gain, which is sweet along the way. We we also are going to have Outland Liberator here. It's another extra werewolf we can utilize. If it's a human, you have to sacrifice it in order to destroy an artifact or enchantment. But if you could flip it into a werewolf form, all you simply have to do is just attack and you'll be able to get rid of that artifact or enchantment that's keeping you from doing your thing. We also have a little bit of light extra removal with Scorching Shot here. It does simple 5 damage to any target creature out there. And if we do need to do a little extra damage against some of our other more peskier, more troublesome decks out there we also have some extra damage with collision colossus it also can hit a flyer but ideally you want to use this as a pump spell for your creature and we also will then utilize gruel charm here which has a bunch of multiple abilities here which is great for us as we want to make sure that we have a bunch of catch-all options for us to defeat any of our opponents whatever they may throw at us now, as far as strategy and tips on how to pilot this deck, it honestly it doesn't take actually that much to think about. I know, I know. If you've played Gruel of Aggro like I have in different variants over time, I know that kind of sounds a little cliched for Gruel, but that actually is kind of the point here. You play things on curve, you'll just overwhelm your opponent, and you're just going to get your victory with some no-nonsense damage. But there is a little bit of nuance to this deck that a lot of people may have overlooked, and that actually comes in the form of how your creatures synergize so well together. One of the biggest assets and benefits of this deck is the deck is not only powerful as a whole, but also individual pieces of this deck are capable of handling themselves, even if you only have one or two wolves out. So as we mentioned earlier, your one drops are capable of doing their own self pump. So you can sink mana into that while you're trying to build up your game plan. Or if your opponent is a little weak on the creature side, and maybe they just don't have enough removal to handle everything, you can throw out your whole hand and you can get your wins out of nowhere. The other major thing that also you have a benefit with this deck is being able to deal with both the day bound and night bound side may seem a little annoying at times but if you can force it with unnatural moonrise you can still kind of get a couple of surprise wins when you can flip your werewolves over to get the maximum amount of power and damage out of them however we have to of course talk about one of the biggest weaknesses to the deck is while we do have ways of dealing with creature heavy decks your biggest weakness to the deck of course is as you might have guessed control decks and also any kind of good mid-range deck that is able to handle and outvalue your creatures though again keep in mind that most of your removal is only just in the main deck sorcery and you do have some protection but that's only in the sideboard so if you're playing best of three you do have some better options but in the main deck you might struggle a little bit if your opponent is not all in on creatures and more removal heavy having said that i do want to reiterate one more time you do have a couple of ways again of getting some surprise damage out of nowhere. As I mentioned earlier, Unnatural Moonrise can flip Daybound into Nightside and then make your werewolves extremely powerful out of nowhere. Remember that those werewolves also will pump up all of your wolves, so you can definitely get in some extra damage. Hellpack Resurgent is a flash enchantment, so you can use that as a pseudo combat trick to kind of again get your opponent off guard. So to put it another way, definitely don't underestimate what these wolves are capable of, as they can kind of surprise even your opponents if they really think you're that predictable. And as always, as you can see on screen right now, I will be posting up some of the other variants of Gruul that you might want to play. So if you are interested, of course, in just doing some more aggro stuff, maybe if you actually do want to stick to the wolf game plan, there are definitely a lot of other variants out there that will definitely pump this team up. One of the good things if you do want to stick to wolves is, as you see, it's gotten extremely much more powerful over time. And I think they're probably at least one, maybe even two sets away from being competitively viable. That's my hot take, and I'm going to stick to that. But with that out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give on the deck. Overall, at face value, it doesn't look like it's doing anything super special. However, when it comes to Gruul decks, mostly you don't have to be special. You just basically just turn sideways and just do as much damage as fast as you can. So, to put it another way, if you are a fan of aggro strategies, if you're a fan of playing everything on curve, and if you're a fan of just sometimes overwhelming your opponent out of nowhere with your special abilities of being able to flip your wolves into werewolves, or just do a little extra flash damage to just pump up the whole team with anthems by all means i would say give this deck a try and i assure you whether you want to play this of course in best of one or best of three or whether you want to actually upgrade this into all the stuff that we mentioned earlier you'll definitely have a lot of fun doing so you'll be very surprised at how this deck is capable of performing and i assure you you will not be disappointed that's all i have for you today thanks again for watching everyone and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life always be sure to burn bright later